interpret it uh, the same way, but you, it's somewhat similar. Uh, what people report more often than not is Nagelkirky R squared because it's scaled from 0 to 1.0, whereas Cox and Snell R squared is it has a maximum value of 0.75, I believe. Uh, so Nagelkirky R squared is always going to be larger than Cox uh, and Snell R squared because it's on a different scale. So r roughly speaking, we can say that 51.8 percent of the variability in the in, in the dependent variable is accounted for by independent variables. But we qualify that under the context that this is really a pseudo R squared value. It actually means something uh, a little bit different to that. Uh, but that's how people kind of interpret it. Now, the Hosmer and Lemeshow Le test is the next output in the table, and, and this is testing something like that's the opposite, which is we want this... If we have a really great model that's doing some really great prediction, this chi-square value will not be statistically significant. Uh, and so, because it's actually statistically significant in this case, it's telling me that there's some misspecification in the predictive capacity of the model. Uh, it's a very harsh test. If your sample size is relatively large, and, and actually the, the sample size in this fictitious case is, isn't quite large enough for this test, uh, it's argued that this uh, Hosmer and Lemeshow test should be, have a sample size of 400 or greater. This is only 189, so it's lower. But uh, chi-square, as you may or may not know, is a, is a statistic that's very sensitive to sample size. And so very small deviations can actually result in statistically significant effects. So what am I talking about deviations? It's just like a cross-tabs analysis. The consistency table of uh, for Ho Hosmer and Lemeshow test is based on uh, deciles. And basically what it do, does is it separates, segregates the uh, probability, uh, predicted probabilities in 10 categories and it counts the number of uh, people in those categories and it compares them against the uh, expected versus uh, observed. And the difference between the expected and the observed, as that becomes greater, the less predictive capacity there is in your model and the larger your chi-square value is going to be. Uh, and so the less impressed you are about your model. But as I mentioned, it's very uh, sensitive to sample size. And we can see here in the in the what we probably have most interested in 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 is the yes category. Who is defaulting on their mortgage, and are we predicting them? Uh, that's what a bank would want to know. And we can see that we expect in this uh, final ca category of predicted probabilities, uh, we expect nine point eight, but it's actually uh, there's actually an observed uh, number of twelve. Uh, but we're only uh, expecting 9.8. All right, so the deviation between these, the less um, predictive capacity uh, in your model. Now, I suspect not a lot of people actually look at that, to be honest, and I can understand why, because it's really the classification table that, uh, perhaps not from a statistical standpoint, because we do use the... Um, uh, we don't actually calculate a statistical analysis on the classification table per se, Although I could kind of think maybe you could. Uh, anyway, uh, what we have here, and I saw, sometimes I, th I, can, I can totally understand how people would have a hard time getting their head around this, is uh, we have 170 people here. This is in the predicted model here. Now, 170 people are in the no. They're predicted, 170 people were predicted not to uh, default on their mortgage. And nine people are predicted to default on their mortgage. All right. Now, does that have any bear does that have any semblance to the first classification? Well, in the first classification, I guess I'll emphasize the yes here, the people who are defaulting. In the when we lo looked at the null model where we just looked at the difference between the two, there were 18 people who were predicted uh, not there were 18 people who in fact defaulted on their loan. Now when we look at the model that was used to create predictive values, we can see that it only uh, produced nine uh, cases of predicted mortgage defaulters. So it actually missed, um, I should say the nines here, nine yes, uh, but it actually failed to predict 
uh, 9. So we can see that there's 50% classification here uh, that's correct. So 